Everywhere, there's a race for a COVID vaccine, but here in London Paddington, there's a race for a new type of vaccine altogether. Professor Robin Shattuck is leading a team at Imperial College who are using a new technique to get the human body to recognise the most dangerous part of the virus, the hook or spike on its outside, so the body can be ready if it ever sees the real thing. You're not even giving the body part of the virus, you're giving the body the plans for the most deadly part of the virus. Absolutely. They begin human trials in mid-June and hope for 6,000 human tests by October. Maybe early next year, this revolutionary technique will be ready for you or I. Here's how it works. The spikes on the surface of the virus are what allows it to uh, attack and get into the cells in your body. Their technique injects the genetic code of that spike into the body and lets your muscle cells make lots of the spikes. And your immune system recognises that and starts to make antibodies that bind and recognise that spike so that when you see the whole virus having been immunised, your immune system immediately makes antibodies that lock onto the spike and means that the virus can no longer infect cells. It's a new technique entirely because most vaccines give a weakened entire virus for the body to learn to fight. The cells are working like a factory. They're making the vaccine themselves, doing the heavy lifting, rather than us having to make huge amounts of virus in a manufacturing plant. And this technique has two advantages. The amounts needed per dose are tiny, and so 16,000 litres could, in theory, they say, be enough to vaccinate the entire world. And two, the technique, if successful, can be used for other viruses too in the future. The huge steps coronavirus is forcing us to take, leading us into a new world of great, unexpected advances. Hi, I'm Zevi Hamburger. I'm an anesthesiologist at Mount Sinai. His video diaries, a personal chronicle of a doctor fighting the coronavirus on the front lines of this pandemic. I'm running to another intubation. This is my fifth of the day, actually. As an anesthesiologist on a rapid response team at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City, he sees the most critically ill patients every day. I had to have a conversation with the, with the patient and her son about what she wants it done for her, what kind of extreme measures we can do to keep her alive. And because it's too unsafe for families to visit, the role of doctors in a patient's final moments has become so much more. The only thing that we can do as doctors and nurses is, is try and, and be, a, be a person there with them, even at the end, even if their family can't physically be there. Dr. Hamburger told us that is still one of the hardest parts of treating COVID patients. And he says while hospitalizations and intubations are down, there are hundreds of people who are still dying from COVID-19 every day in New York. And after weeks on the front lines, it has taken its toll. Everyone in the hospital right now is dealing with these emotions and these feelings. We had graduates from nursing program who were in tears in the stairwell and can't even reach out and put your arm around someone. But this is really the stress that healthcare workers have right now. It's not just getting themselves sick, but spreading it. Dr. Hamburger says other doctors have told him these videos help show what healthcare workers are going through every day, including the risks. I woke up in the middle of the night with fever and, and chills. Sometime in mid March, despite all his precautions, he started showing symptoms. Soon after, so did his wife and two of his three children. We have to lock down and, and isolate really from everyone. He and his family had mild cases of COVID-19 and fully recovered. I'm donating convalescent plasma. He hopes that donation will end up helping others. And looking ahead, he says while there is so much talk of reopening and moving on, not to forget those who are still fighting the fight every day. I think many people are, are worried that people are going to start forgetting about us on, on the front lines. And when the seven o'clock stopping, you know, clapping stops, and when the stories, people start to get jaded about how we're on the front lines, that's when we're gonna need people's help the most because that's when we're gonna come home.
Being a healthcare provider is always high risk and full of stress, but experts are saying because of the coronavirus, those risk factors and stressors are amplified. Our healthcare workers are becoming the so-called second victims of this crisis. That term refers to those experiencing trauma related to a patient's care. And you're talking about a, a vulnerable population of people. I mean. Um, you know, death by suicide among the medical community is higher than the general population and within EMTs and emergency workers, it's, it's the highest even among medical workers. So, you know, th there's, a, there's a lot of stress. Hospitals around the country have been running at or over capacity. Work hours have increased. Supplies and protective gear have been in short supply or at times non-existent. And yet healthcare workers are expected to give each and every patient 110 percent. And because of how contagious this disease is, patients often aren't allowed to have contact with their loved ones, putting their doctors and nurses in the position of comforter as well. Many in the healthcare industry have also decided to distance themselves from family members to keep them safe. Significant psychological toll of that as well, not just for themselves uh, in terms of am I, am I safe? Did I contract the virus? Was I just exposed? And then going home, potentially uh, exposing it to others. Which is why, now more than ever, they need our support. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither.